I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, the New England Gilbert and Sullivan Society is working to provide some virtual entertainment based on the works of our favorite composer and lyricist. We're making the best of the awkward shutdown of videos and performing groups by taking the opportunity to feature materials other than the operettas. And of course, tonight that means Sullivan's church music. Some of the pieces, some of the performances that we have coming up are on Saturday, August 15th at 7 p.m. We will be performing Rosencrantz and Gilbert's, let's try this again. This is why I don't normally act. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, which is Gilbert's burlesque in three short tableaux. It features two, the two best known bit parts in all of Shakespeare. So if you're interested in performing in that, um, take a look at the script, it's on the GNS archive, and then get in touch with me. And there are roles for four men and four women. So we will be casting that and getting it together very soon. It'll probably be like a technical meeting and a read through and then the performance, not a big time uh, commitment. The next performance after that will be based on the Bab Ballads. This is going to be musical spoken words and other interpretations of Gilbert's famous comic poems. This is currently planned for Saturday, September 12th at 7 p.m. Contact me if you'd like to Gilbert to contribute anything, anything from a song or a reading. I have a few um, musical arrangements of the of the poems. If anybody would like to take a look at those, get in touch with me. I can send them on. Um, I'd love to see animations. I'm open to sock puppets. Um, I'd, I'd love to see a whole range of interpretations of the bad ballads. Um, so this evening, we are going to hear a few of the many hymns and anthems composed by Sir Arthur Seymour Sullivan. I'm taking, I have taken some material from the Gilbert and Sullivan archive, which is a wonderful resource, and I will read a paragraph, which I've condensed a little bit. This material was prepared by Paul Howarth. From 1861 to 1872, Arthur Sullivan held the post of organist at two of London's fashionable churches, St. Michael's in Chester Square, Pimlico, and St. Peter's at Cranley Gardens, Kensington. His earliest hymn tunes were composed during this period. In 1867 and 68, he contributed to collections compiled for use by the Presbyterian Church in England. In 1872, 12 new tunes by Sullivan were included in the hymnary. In 1874, Sullivan himself edited hymn to, excuse me, Church Hymns with Tunes, published by the Society for Provoke promoting Christian knowledge. He included 14 tunes of his own, which had been published previously, besides composing 24 new tunes and harmonizing or arranging a further 68 specifically for that book. Um, for those of you who are counting, that makes 106. Um, also in 1874, four new tunes were included in the New Church Hymn Book and Caro, appeared in 1875, setting words by Adelaide Ann Proctor, who was the author of The Lost Chord. In 1897, uh, we have Bishop Garth as the setting of the official hymn celebrating Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. And then in 1902, Novello published a collection of 56 hymn tunes by Sullivan, which included four unpublished tunes whose manuscripts were found amongst his papers after his death. Time for a hymn. Yes, Elaine, thank you. We have chosen just a few of the obviously many, many works that um, Sullivan wrote for church music. And our first selection is going to be Ever Faithful, um, which was composed for church hymns with tunes. And Thomas Dawkins is going to introduce this ensemble so Tom can um, start his video. I'm going to close mine and then share his screen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jackie. Uh, 
Good evening, everybody. And uh, so I, uh, I've been a church music director for over a dozen years now, and in doing so, have had a chance to sort of discover, you know, one of the other sides of Sullivan and actively uh, sought out quite a few hymns and anthems while I was uh, while I was music directing because I wanted to see what was out there and some of them predictably not everything is absolutely brilliant but some of them are very nice and uh, here's one that I've done with as if for those of you who have followed me you know that I have my own my own ensembles and this one is the Royal Street Recorder Consort and Chamber Choir and they will be singing Sullivan's Ever Faithful. Tom, that was lovely. I love uh, this music on recorders. I figured that uh, recorders, recorders are really the most organ pipe like instrument there is. Uh, and I've, I've, done, I've used that in a lot of demonstrations and it, it, it works surprisingly well for a lot of this. Thank you very much. The next piece that we're going to hear is I Will Lay Me Down in Peace, which is a full anthem for four voices with words from Psalm 4-9. It was composed in 1868 and published by Novello in 1910. Uh, Juliet Cunningham has arranged this piece for congregational singing. So I can, I am going to turn it over to Juliet, who is on here with a number. I, I'm trying to put it on share screen as I'm not getting it. Hold on. Uh, joint, joint audio. That's no audio connected. Hold on just a minute. It's quite all right. Ah, there's share screen. Ah, uh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Could you enable uh, it, please? Did I? Thought I, oh, I enabled it before. Um, hold on one moment. Share screen. It's still saying disabled. Still saying disabled. I know, I'm trying to find the right. Oh, okay. All right. This, this not, well, why don't I talk while, uh, while you're yes. doing that? All right, so um, these are the things I found. Uh, Psalm 4 only has eight verses, so this is actually not verse 9. Uh, all the additions 
made a mistake in the tenor part at measure eight, the original measure 18, which is measure 19 in this for a reason I will say in a minute. Uh, but fortunately, the keyboard part was entered correctly, so I was able to fix it. I put this on a finale file, which will scroll, and for the most part, it shouldn't you know, hiccup as it switches pages. It will go pretty smoothly, and I invite anybody who cites things well to sing along with me, but please mute yourselves, otherwise we'll always all get behind time. Um, I added an extra measure at the beginning. Uh, the, it's in 3-2, so it's three half notes uh, outlining the chord we start on so that anybody who wants to sing along will know when to come in and what note to sing. The breath marks are mine, though, with the terrible air quality that we have today, I might not be able to make my own. So let me, let me see. Are you ready to share, share the screen? Hello? Muted. So sorry. Hi, Jenny. Okay. Um, I have hit various things and I thought I had it. Oh, wait a second. Here we go. This should help. Okay, so I'm hitting share screen. Ah, here we are. Okay, okay. there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Juliet. That was lovely. Thank you. Um, it, as I say, one of the things that I was hoping for was a variety of different um, performance styles. And so it's nice to have, we've already seen two good ones. There, there's a, there is a charming video of this on YouTube by a German choir. And after they sing it through once, they sing it through in German. Oh, that would be nice. So our, our next two numbers are not strictly speaking church music, but they do fit well with this program. The lost chord will follow, but first we are going to hear Mourn Happy Mourn, which was originally composed for the play Olivia by W.G. Wills, and it was first performed at the Court Theatre London on 30th March, 1878. It was dedicated to Mrs. John Fairs. Um, Janet Poli, Carolyn Schwartz, Sarah DeLong will be singing with Catherine Denny at the piano and Taylor Sabato on flute all the way from California. So I'm not sure who is going to be sharing their screen, but I know that several of those people are here, so someone can take it away. Oh. 
Blend is a pretty, pretty song. So our next number is one of Sullivan's best known outside the operettas, and it was the Lost Chord, which of course was composed by Arthur Sullivan in 1877 as he sat at the bedside of his brother Fred, who was dying. Um, the manuscript is dated 18, excuse me, January 13th, 1877. Um, and Fred died just a few days later. The lyric is originally a poem by Adelaide Ann Proctor called A Lost Chord, and it was published in 1858 in a magazine called The English Woman's Journal. The song was immediately successful and became uh, identified with a number of singers. Um, Sullivan was very proud of the song and later noted, I have composed much music since then, but have never written a lost, second lost chord. Later on, many singers recorded the song, including Enrico Caruso, who sang it at a benefit concert for families of the victims of the Titanic disaster. It has endured as one of the best known songs and the setting is still performed today. Thomas Dawkins is going to bring us another lovely performance of it. So I will hand it over to him. Thank you. This is... Uh... This is indeed one of the most popular and a lot of people are unaware that the original accompaniment is for is for piano and harmonium, which was actually pretty common in the Victorian days. The harmonium is a sort of home organ instead of having pipes, it has re reeds in it. And I have never actually gotten to do the piece with its intended accompaniment, so I said, I don't have a harmonium, very few people do, and if they do, it probably isn't in working order anymore. But as many of you know, I'm also a double reed player, so I decided since I'm doing these multi-tracks anyway, I might, might as well make use of it. And so what you're going to hear is a sort of drawing room presentation of the Lost Chord for piano, woodwind, uh, woodwind septet, and, and baritone. If I can figure out how to make this work again. There we go. That's not what I'm trying to. Ah.
Was lovely. Tom, could you identify the various parts of your um, uh, harmonium there? Yes, the, there's two oboes, which are the smallest, two English horns, two bassoons, and the great big one's a contrabassoon. And that goes all the way down <laughs> to the second lowest note on the piano. Goodness. Thank you. <laughs> I thought I could name them all, but I wanted to be sure. Thank you. Absolutely. That was absolutely lovely. So I'm going to start mine up again. So going, returning to the hymns, I want to quote a little bit more of Paul Howarth from the um, archive. For some, Sullivan's hymn tunes re represent the epitome of Victorian sentimentality, and it must be admitted that several of them provide ammunition for those who would argue that Sullivan turned to hymn writing not from any deep religious conviction, but simply as a way of making money. But the best of them are very memorable, well suited to congregational singing and show a real sensitivity to the words. It cannot be denied that the popularity of Sullivan's hymn tunes with compilers of hymn books declined during the 20th century. While it was not unusual for a 19th century hymn book to contain approaching um, 30 Sullivan tunes, the British Methodist hymn book of 1933 combines but 15 and its successor, Hymns and Psalms of 18, excuse me, 1983 contains only three. Anne Ference took a look through her own collection of um, Lutheran hymnals and found several of the pieces um, represented there is a chart that I have posted on the MEGAS Facebook page um, that shows um, various years uh, that sh of hymnals that sh Anne has and which uh, melodies, which pieces were um, included, which is a little interesting to take a look at. So the next piece that we're going to have uh, tonight is To Thee, O Lord, Our Hearts We Raise which uh, the tune to this is Golden Sheaves, and it was composed for hymn tune, yep, I, I don't know why I can't read this line, Church Hymns with Tunes in 1874, 
and it will be performed by Ben Morse. Hello. So uh, what I did with this song, and I'll share my screen in just a moment, is I sort of reimagined it a little bit with the, the thought of what I was doing this morning, which was helping to lead worship music at a church. So um, I didn't really change it all that much, but I just sort of played it in a way that was uh, a little bit more like, uh, more like me, I guess. So anyway, I'll share the video and hopefully this will work. The audio isn't coming through to us. That's true. Yeah, I've seen this problem before. Um, so Ben's hearing the audio, but we aren't. Let me, all right, I'm guessing that we're not hearing it? Correct. That's correct. Oh, okay. Well, That's there must correct. be. A setting I've, I need to select? I've seen this problem before. Yeah, there are like two places that you have to share the audio. Okay. Um, but I haven't done it myself. I have an email from someone that gave me instructions because I've been on a couple calls where this. Well, maybe someone right. else knows or I'm going to start hunting for you. Let's see if there's a setting I can see. Ben, I would try to look under where your mute button is and select right. audio settings. Let's see. Share screen. Enable remote control. Maximize zoom. Scale to fit. Silent system notifications. Audio. Let's check audio. Use separate audio device. Play ringtones. Mute when joining. That's not checked off. Press and hold sync buttons on headset. Show in meeting, enable original sound from microphone. Is the enable original sound the setting that I need? Uh, no, ben, I think when that's... you click share screen, you need to yeah. check a box and it says yes. share computer sound. Let me see. All right, yes. just a moment. That's it. Okay, music or computer sound only portion of screen. Let me see. Music or computer sound only. Let's see if that works. Ready? We're going to try it again. To thee, O Lord, our hearts we raise. It's working. To Thee, O Lord, our hearts we raise in hymns of adoration. To Thee bring sacrifice of praise with shout of exaltation. Bright robes of gold the fields adorn, the hills with joy are ringing, the valley stands so thick even they are singing. And now on this our festal day, thy bounteous hand confessing, upon thine altar, Lord, we lay the first fruits of thy blessing. By thee the souls of men are fed, with gifts of grace supernal, thou, thou who dost give daily bread, give us the bread eternal. Amen. Oh, that's so pretty. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
So our next piece is um, one I, I have heard it and it is also very pretty. It is I Need the Precious Jesus performed by Elaine Crane with Paige Crane Brawley at the piano. And I am going to invite Elaine to take a shot at sharing the screen. And otherwise I will try to do it from my end. Hello. Are we there? Hi. Hi. Uh, given the trouble everyone's having with their screens and that I already have trouble even on normal days, I'd rather just have you do it. <laughs> Maybe let me try it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> she says optimistically because I haven't really tried to do it that much either. Share computer sound. That's one thing I want. Now that I think is what I want. There we go. And I was not able to actually find the composition date of this as I was cramming for my exam. I mean, writing my narration, but it is a lovely piece. So here we go.
Thank you, Elaine and Paige. That was very pretty. We have another uh, piece now from um, Tom Dawkins and the Royal Street Recorder Consort and Chamber Singers. It is Sweet Savior, Bless Us, Ere We Go. The tune is known as Valete, and it was composed for church hymns with tunes in 1874. Um, so I will hand things over to Tom and Tom and Tom and Tom. <laughs> Someone asked, they said, why, are, why do all of your friends have, have names that are just anagrams of yours? I'm like, funny that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the things that uh, had a sort of tradition at the church where I was working. <laughs> Same germ group, indeed. Uh, we always had a choral response to the benediction, and it got... Uh, a little difficult to keep finding pieces that sort of worked for this. So I went through practically every hymnal I could find and looked at the sort of end of worship song. And this became section, and this became something that we did quite a lot, actually. And after I left the church, they actually said, where did you get that? We want another copy of it. So I sent it to them. And so here we go with this. And I will go. You. That's another one that's so pretty, and it's so pretty with the recorders. Thank, Thank you. you, Tom, for sharing your many gifts with us. Thank you very much. Can we turn on our... Our final piece is going to be probably Sullivan's best-known hymn tune, certainly the only one I knew. Um, one of the earliest pieces of music I remember learning in my Southern Baptist early childhood was Onward Christian Soldiers, and it, once it is in your head, it is in your head forever. Um, it is certainly his best known hymn tune in the United States, although the church militant flavor of the text is quite dated. There is a wonderful parody of this, uh, this number written by Gordon Reynolds, who was organist and master of the choristers at Chapel Royal Hampton Court from 1967 until his death in 1995. It's too long to read here, but I have posted it to the NEGAS Facebook page because I 
believe that it will entertain all of you, especially anybody that knows more than I do about music theory. Um, the tune is St. Gertrude. It was published in the Musical Times in December of 1871. And this rendition is by the Driveway Choir produced by Catherine and Bryce Denny, who will talk about how that works. Here we go. I am Catherine Denny and I'm a music director and singer. Um, Bryce is a pianist and engineer, and we decided that since people can't sing close together indoors right now, that we would combine our skills and come up with a safe way to enjoy singing together live. So we were all getting fed up with attempting to make music over Zoom where there's a delay and all this, and also kind of recording ourselves in virtual choirs. We got a little tired of that. We did, we did four or five of them <laughs> or whatever. Um, so how the driveway choir works is that we invite people to our house, except that they stay in their car. <laughs> and we, we hand each person a disinfected microphone, and then we hook up their microphones to a mixer and play the, the sound of the choir back through their car stereo. So it's a little bit crazy, um, but it, it does actually work. You can, you can hear yourself and you can hear the rest through the car stereo. Um, and so we have a video that, that, uh, of Onward Christian Soldiers that we made that way. So we're going to share our screen and share computer sound and then get this one. Okay, I hope you can see that. And now we're going to make sure it starts at the beginning. I'm going to hide the video of you. Okay, please. <laughs> Here we go. This is me. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before. Christ the royal master, he's against the amazing <laughs> Come, uh, bring bring your video back Denny's uh, or did I, I, oh, okay I don't think we took it away but I can stop sharing I just want to know how you conducted and sang in your car at the same time and how Bryce <laughs> ran well, the board and sang in his car at the same time <laughs> okay well um, I was trying to make a, uh, a video that had I, I worked really hard to block out all the license plates. I, I'm sorry, Brad, we saw yours for a second, but um, I, <laughs> I did have um, a, a, not enough selfies of people in cars and I was like, you know, I've taken a picture of every single type of microphone that we've tried with me holding it. So yeah, <laughs> um, it was evolved, but, but um, we have had probably, what, what would you say, 45 or 50 people come at different times. So we each have 
each group is like maxed out at 20. We, we're now up to 24 that we're going to have this Wednesday. But um, it's, you know, it's been different people every time. So we, because I don't direct a regular choir, I just direct a bunch of musical theater groups, which are all kind of on vacation right now. So um, this has been so much fun and it actually sounds good. I mean, we, you know, you can, you can mix the sounds and, and adjust the balance between the sections and it's kind of cool. So that's, that's a really amazing sound. I have certainly heard churches that didn't come across that well. <laughs> no, that was really lovely. Yeah. So, so a bunch of you on Wednesday. Uh, you don't want me. Um, I have been delighted to have um, put this material together. As I say, I am a little mortified by the uh, extra entertainment in the early portion of the program. And thank you all for coming back to the um, newly sanitized version of um, this evening's program. Anybody that would like to, um, you could turn your videos on. It's um, down in the, what is that left-hand corner? Hit the little video camera and we can make like this is the lobby or the, the uh, what do they call it in the front of a church? Anyway, North North vestibule. Vestibule, thank vestibule. you. <laughs> the English language completely deserts me some evenings. <laughs> thank you all very much for coming and for your patience. And thank you so much to everyone that participated who sent material, um, Tom and Sarah and Catherine and Bryce and Carolyn and um, Anne who helped with things and Elaine and Paige and Ben and just, I know I forgot somebody, Janet, and everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone. Bowdlerized is a good word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for organizing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for organizing. Yeah. Thank While the meeting was going on, I checked in my hymnals. I'm music director of a Presbyterian church. We have a hymnal and we have a psalter. And there are six uh, examples of Sullivan's music. Four of them are his arrangements of a piece called Noel, which he mm. didn't write. One is his uh, St. Kevin and one is Constance. And I found nothing in my Catholic hymnal. Yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the new English hymnal. And this act this has five in it, and this is this is from the from the nineteen eighties, but it's very commonly used in Anglican churches in England. So it's it's not quite as bad, but it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the Lutherans had eleven uh, by Sullivan in nineteen fifty eight, but then the nineteen seventy nine hymnal cut it down to four. And 2006, there's only one left. Oh. Which one is it, Anne? Savior right? again to your dear name. It's an arrangement of Ellers, so it's not even oh. a Sullivan tune. But they, they seem to really love his arrangement of the tune named Lemonster um, and kept trying different words to it for a while. <laughs> so that was kind of, it was really fun to see, and I'd, I'd be so interested in... Uh, what people are finding that made it across the ocean into other um, other hymnals. I'm all curious now. I have, have to go through my hymnals and see what I got. Yeah, I think it'll be fun to compile them. You know, it'd be really fun if anybody, well, we know we have at least a couple candidates on here. Um, if we wanted to dig into this more in a few months or whatever, in the depths of winter, if someone was willing to lead a sing-along from their home, I've seen this be very successful. If you have, I can wink at people, they won't know who I'm winking at. Uh, if you have a pianist and one or more singers in your home, <laughs> Um, it can be really quite fun for other people to be on mute and sing along and we could just explore. I think it would be really fun. The only That's... one I have is St. Kevin. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. come, come, come ye faithful, raise a string. That's yeah. okay. one of my favorites. Yep. 
There's one I, I like called I Welcome Happy it. Morning. Mm -hmm. Welcome Happy Morning. It's an Easter. Oh, it's an almost, Easter almost any British hymnal is going to have Noel in that because that's what they used to sing. It came upon the midnight clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Clear. Yeah. And it's one of those that we're, we're yep. both, both countries sing the same carol, but with completely different tune, just like right. Uh, right. Right. a little town of Bethlehem, for instance. Mm -hmm. And that I was, uh, I was singing with the Handel and Haydn Society when they decided to do a, what, what he was calling an American Christmas collection, except he had said, he had, uh, Harry Christophers had done a survey of American church directors and everyone said, oh, you have to do a little town of Bethlehem. So of course he put, oh, little town of Bethlehem. Or like, that's very beautiful, but that isn't what any of us grew up singing. <laughs> but we actually did, we did both versions and we did a couple others in the version that Americans do and in the version that, that British people do. So it, it it became a bit of a thing, but it was just funny that he he's like, oh yes, we're going to do, we're going to do this one. You all know it. It's like well, we do it because we're professional singers, and that's what we do. <laughs> that would actually be a really fun program. Would be comparing two different. Of course, this is how it is. Is of different pieces. 